Hi, it's me Bjorn coming at you live from my room. And uh Asher, what are you? Dogs. Uh, I recently saw The Suicide Squad by James Gunn, the vastly superior film to Suicide Squad by uh, David Ayer, which was not good. So I thought, hey, that looks like a lot of fun. I think writing a Suicide Squad movie would be a blast. I think it looks awesome. I think you get to use some really weird characters and you can basically do whatever you want. And I think that's like the dream when you're writing a, a comic book thing. You're not bound by like Superman or characters like that that have very specific things they have to do. Suicide Squad, you can kind of go fuck wild. There's nothing you can't do with it because these characters, no one really cares about them. Uh, no one gives a fuck about Ratcatcher. No one cares at all about, um, I don't know, uh, who else is in that movie? Polka Dot Man, no one cares. I think he's kind of neat and I was always sort of a fan of his weird comic book version where he like throws out all kinds of different polka dots that do really dumb things. I think that's really fun. But anyway, I think it's a it's a good franchise and I think James Gunn's approach of pulling the weird characters out and actually giving them interesting backstories and some cool personalities and just letting them be weird is the much better approach. So I watched that movie and I was like, I want to try that. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do that. I'm going to try it. I'm going to make my own. So I started uh, thinking up an idea. And I have been working on my own version of The Suicide Squad 3, or The Suicide Squad 2, or I'm going to call mine Suicide Squad The Point of No Return. I think you need a, uh, an, at this point, you can't do The Suicide Squad 2 or Suicide Squad 3, it would be confusing. So I've just, a, a, a subtitle I think is the, uh, is the correct way to do this. And it's also sort of a reference to the first movie because they used Kansas's uh, Point of No Return in the movie. That would be a nice little callback. And uh, so yeah, that's what I'm doing. So for this video, I'm not going to touch on the plot. Um, I am going to go over the cast of characters I intend to use as both villains and your, I guess, heroes who are also villains, whatever, your, your standard squad. What characters I chose and why I chose them. Um, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Um, yeah, real fast though, I am going to be running a full script for my movie. I'll put it up here when I'm done. And until then, I'm going to be giving like vague plot synopsises, uh, points of interest, things that happen, maybe some brief dialogue I've written. But I am writing a whole script, just because I think it's a fun exercise, and because it's good practice for writing a script. I'll never do anything with it, but if someone watches this, I would be surprised, but it would be neat. And if you guys have any feedback, characters you think I should use, or characters I've never heard of, I am going to warn you in advance, I am not keeping these characters exactly how they appear on the comic book page. I think to bring something into live action, especially into like a Suicide Squad project, you need to make some changes, especially because I am using characters that are not traditionally associated with the squad. I have a few that are, and I am considering this a soft reboot again, because I think that's the right thing to do. So almost none of the characters from the previous movies are going to appear here. Uh, you're not going to get a rat catcher, no blood sport, and I'm not even including Peacemaker, because I don't know what's going to happen in his show. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave him out so that my thing doesn't become weirdly dated as a alternate universe potential sequel that's probably terrible. All right, so without further ado, go ahead and start playing uh, Oh No by Grandson because we're gonna introduce our squad. And I feel like our first character we should introduce is a classic of the Suicide Squad. It's of course Blockbuster, a very large man who might be superhuman. It's always sort of unclear, but he's just a very big person. And in my iteration of uh, Blockbuster, he is also very, very dumb. I'm going to sort of use him to fill in the uh, King Shark role of the sort of lovable sidekick. And uh, he is going to be simple. He doesn't say anything but his own name, pulling a little bit of Hodor from Game of Thrones, using it here. Blockbuster has been a longtime member of the squad and has appeared on several off-screen missions alongside Harley Quinn, Boomerang. Characters we know have gone on several squad missions. Um... So he's a, he's a veteran. He's been on a few of these. We've just never seen him. We're gonna wink. Oh yeah, there was all these grand adventures like Obi-Wan and Anakin talk about in between movies. Um, my next character I'm going to use is Harley Quinn. Uh, the classic Harley Quinn, you know, uh, Margaret Robbie. We're gonna take the one from James Gunn's version because, I mean, Jesus, she's so much better. Um, and we're gonna use her uh, sparingly. I think Harley Quinn is often ever used. And as much as I like James Gunn's version, I do think she is a little overplayed in that. Um, I think she's best relegated as a funny side character that pops up from time to time, or she becomes very jarring. So I'm going to use her sparingly, but I do want to include at least one member of the previous squad, and this is it. Uh, the other members I could see living a normal life, uh, going away from being on the squad and not going back to jail, at least to a certain extent. Harley Quinn, I don't see her staying out of jail for longer than a month, and uh, that's exactly what's happened here. She's been arrested again, and Waller has her. 
and is reusing her in the squad and maybe is out for a little revenge. We'll have to see. Obviously, Amanda Waller uh, using her. Um, and then uh, my next character is one that I am quite fond of. He is an alumni of the Doom Patrol and is a member of their villains. He appears in the show, but I haven't actually gotten that far yet in it. I've just started watching it. But I uh, was reading on the villain wiki for DC characters, and I came across this guy, and I was like, oh, this is so perfect. This guy is so freaking weird. Why does this character exist? And the character I'm talking about is Beard Hunter. He's a man who hates beards. Uh, in the comic books, he can't grow his own. I'm not going to use that motivation. I don't think it really makes sense. I, I know in the Doom Patrol show he has a different motivation, but again, haven't seen it. Uh, in mine, he is just a crazy person who does not like beards. He has no motivation, and there's no reason he shouldn't like beards, but he hates them, and he will kill anyone who has one. He is a thing I think has been missing in the previous Squad movies, except for maybe Boomerang. He's just a crazy person, like an actual crazy person with no redeeming qualities whatsoever. Even if you think he's going to be a hero, the second someone with a beard shows up, he will kill them. There's no redemption here. There's no good guy here. This guy's just a crazy guy. And I think that's something that the squad kind of needs uh, a certain energy of. I think Boomerang kind of had it, but even he has this, these heroic moments. And I think he just needs straight up a nut job. Uh, yeah, and this guy hates beards, so I should be uh, very afraid of him. So Beard Hunter, yes, real, real DC character, really silly. And uh, I'm going to be using him. Uh, my next character, Sportsmaster. Uh, I've, this character's got a weird fan base around him people actually are kind of fond of this guy and I think he's really silly and fun uh, I am gonna tweak his uh, character and personality a little bit to make him fit here uh, his powers and abilities are still the same he's good at really all sports he's he can throw a frisbee he can golf he can shoot a basketball and he can throw a football better than most quarterbacks he is very good at sports was always perfect jock and it went right to his head he is your standard stereotype jock douchebag um, sort of uh, arrogant sports master guy. Uh, I think the traditional versions of him from what I've seen are very stoic and like standard villains stuff. I just like this idea that he's a sports master. He, he is literally perfect at sports and there's stereotypes about that that I think you can tap into for comedy. Mostly being a, just a douche, a douche or like being really arrogant and overpowered of his abilities. Now obviously not all people who play sports are like that, but there's a, a film stereotype I can kind of tap into for some fun energy. And uh, that's what I'm going for with Sportsmaster. The man who can throw a ball better than anyone. He's, he's a really silly villain. I like him quite a bit. We're going to be using him. Next, I have a character of my own creation. This is not a comic book character. This is a guy I have invented. But I may do something uh, unique with him. Just uh, stay poised and watching attentively. Uh, this character is called Acid. He has modified super soakers that that squirt acid and he is in prison for killing the Falcone family. He killed them all in a shocking upset. No one knows where this guy came from. He just filled a super soaker and, full of acid and started taking down the mob. And now he's in prison and Amanda Waller wants to make him the leader of her new squad. Um, this guy is, is fun. I'm not going to really say much about him because uh, I want you guys to sort of figure this guy out for yourselves. He's interesting, he's uh, got a different angle to him than I've seen any of these characters use. So we're gonna, we're gonna have some fun with him. Our next character on the squad is Flatline. This is a new character and I'm basically changing her completely. I like her look and I like her aesthetic. Um, and I like one aspect of her power or her abilities. Basically her backstory is she's some sort of like minion slash daughter of one of the various leaders of hell, I guess Satan. It's really unclear, and I actually haven't read the comic book she came from. I've just skimmed the wiki and was like, okay, I like the idea here. I'm going to pull the look, I'm going to pull the personality, and I'm going to pull several of the ideas. Her actual character is that she was trained by long-dead martial artists in Hell, and she is like a master of all these lost techniques that were that died with the masters that died with them. And since she's in Hell, she's able to teach herself. In my version, she speaks to the dead. Um, she's got like a sixth sense thing going on. She talks to dead people. And she has used this ability, again, to construct ancient masters of these lost arts and all this other stuff. And she has a lot of tricks up her sleeve because she knows techniques and things that have been long dead. And has a metahuman ability to boot. Uh, she's also a 20-something uh, millennial. Uh, so we're going to, you know, play with that energy. She's, uh, yeah, she's cool. This is a character I think has a lot of potential if you, like, tweaked her slightly. Her current iteration is very confusing and weird. And I think if you made some changes, she could be kind of a unique squad member, so I'm, I'm doing just that. 
Next guy, another Suicide Squad character, who has another weird, confusing backstory also connected to Hell, and I just don't even want to bother, so he is called Jog. And apparently he's like half Satan or half Hell being half human, and he is French African, which I think is cool. I'm definitely using that. French African is unique and cool. And his powers are he's like a speedster, but he has like limited capabilities of speed. So I this is like arbitrary for me. Um, he can use speed in short bursts, basically, but there's no limit to how long that burst can be, and I know this problem where they say a character has a limitation, but it only ever runs out right when the character needs it to, to have them be in some danger. So I'm tweaking his powers very slightly. He has the ability to run at the speed of the flash. Unfortunately, his eyes do not have the same gift. He can only run in short bursts in front of him, sort of like Tracer and Overwatch, because he can't really see where he's going. So he has all the powers of the Flash and basically none of the utility. Um, so he's got some interesting plays he can do, he's got a fun personality, and uh, there's some potential here for some interesting character stuff. But he's definitely not a normal speedster. That would be broken, and there's no way I could put one of those on the squad. I'm looking at you comic books. I know they tried to put Reverse Flash on the squad at one point, or had the squad fight Reverse Flash. What the hell were you thinking? That's nuts. Reverse Flash, Flash, they're broken. There's no way the squad could kill those guys. It's absurd. You gotta pick the right villains for these things. I say as James Gunn picks Starro. Alright, um, speaking of more villains, our next character, Harley Quinn. Uh, no, not that Harley Quinn. It's a, it's a different Harley Quinn. This one, from forever ago, that's never reappeared. I discovered this character and I was like, there are two DC characters named Harley Quinn? Are you shitting me? Where has this been my whole life? Uh, she doesn't really seem to have any powers or anything. And so instead of making her another clone of Harley Quinn, I'm going to uh, do something a little different. She has a metahuman ability uh, to make people laugh uh, uncontrollably when she laughs near them. Uh, I'm kind of taking this from Mrs. Joke from My Hero Academia, or tweaking it slightly. Uh, her basic idea is she's in her 40s and she has been Harley Quinn for as long as she's been a supervillain. And now there's this new upstart also called Harley Quinn who's taking all of the limelight from her. And everyone is accusing her of being a ripoff even though she was the first. And now she just so happens to be on a squad with the same Harley Quinn. Drama will ensue as well as comedy. Uh, uh, for those of you who don't know, this version of Harley Quinn first appeared in the 1940s and was like a girlfriend to Green Lantern. She doesn't seem to have any powers, maybe she can hypnotize people. So I'm taking the hypnotization angle and sort of making it this laughing thing. I think it works with the aesthetic of this character. And I think it's really funny that DC had another Harley Quinn character before Harley Quinn. And they're basically unrelated to each other. Like, Harley Quinn we have now is not an iteration of this character. They're just completely different and one is just gone from canon after the 90s. It basically, as soon as Harley Quinn was invented, this character just fell off the face of the earth. And I think that's way too funny to not use as a joke. So. That's why I'm including this character. And again, we're, we're you're starting to notice we have a very large cast of characters here, and that's intentional. I think the angle to go with Suicide Squad is not four or five, six characters. It's like a huge cast. And the reason you can do that is a lot of these characters would be irritating or grating in any large capacity. Some of the good ones you can have take center stage. I think James Gunn did that very well. But you also need a large cast so you can kill people a lot. I think that's a big key here. I'm gonna kill a lot of people in this movie. I think that is a lot of the fun of a concept like the Suicide Squad. It's just murdering everybody. So we're, we're gonna be doing that. You can place your bets if you think who's gonna die. Take a guess on which characters I plan on killing. I'm gonna try to make it like up in the air. You never know who's gonna die, who's gonna live, when it's gonna happen. Uh, speaking of characters that are 100% going to die, I have a character called the Ten-Eyed Man. This is not what I made up. This is a real character. It's he has, he has eyes on his fingers, and he's blind, except for the eyes on his fingers. And that's it. That's that's his power. Um, yeah, he's going to be in here. Uh, he has eyes on his fingers. Uh, he's called Ten-Eyed Man. I think that's, that's really all you need to know about him. He's He's got eyes on his fingers. Pretty cool, honestly. I, I like what we've got going on with him. Eyes on his fingers. It's not much more to say. Up next, we've got Metallo, classic Superman villain Metallo, man in a robotic suit powered by a chunk of kryptonite. Uh, in my version, that chunk of kryptonite is actually lodged inside of his heart, Iron Man style. 
and it keeps him alive, but also requires the suit to keep him sort of up and going. Mixing a little bit of um, the classic Metallo, uh, Iron Man, obviously, and pulling in some uh, Dr. Freeze. He's trapped inside the suit, and um, getting this kryptonite lodged in his chest was actually the fault of Superman. In an accident, um, he was robbing a bank, Superman stopped him, one of his compatriots tried to use kryptonite, which Superman batted away and happened to pierce Metallo's stomach, uh, or heart rather, which has led to Metallo getting revenge on Superman, fighting him numerous times and then landing him in Bel Uh Metallo is a fun villain, he's a, he's a classic Superman villain. I don't think DC will ever use him, considering that Superman's already fought Doomsday. I think we're a little past Metallo. So instead of wasting Metallo to the canon, like I think he might end up being like a character like Jimmy Olsen was in Zack Snyder's uh, Batman vs Superman, where he's like, "I am apparently Jimmy Olsen. No one says my name, and I die immediately." <laughs> I kind of fear that might be the fate of a Metallo. So I'm gonna take Metallo and I'm gonna use him for something. This is gonna be what I think might be my most controversial pick uh, because this character is traditionally a hero, uh, or at least what you could call a hero. I am going to take this character and make them a uh, villain for once. They often serve as a sort of villain hero role, like a person who unwittingly becomes the villain and their original story, but this character is not usually someone you would associate with the Suicide Squad or even villainy. In fact, again, this character is associated with the Doom Patrol. Why do I keep pulling from the Doom Patrol? Because they fight weird, zany villains that are just frankly perfect for this. Uh, the character I am talking about is Dorothy Spinner and her uh, imaginary friend Candlemaker. Uh, for those who know, this character is awesome. I absolutely love her. She is a 13-year-old girl who was born deformed. I'm not actually going to use the deformity. I think that's often used to make her fit in with the weirder characters of the Doom Patrol. And I think it feels a little out of place in this context. So I'm just not going to use it for now. Uh, she is... A metahuman who has the ability to bring to life imaginary friends that she creates. What's cool about her, besides you know what I've already explained, is that often these imaginary friends are not her real friends. They're just things she imagines up. So if she has a nightmare or a creature she's afraid of, it becomes real. If she has a friend, it'll become real and help her. But not all her imaginary friends are on her side, and often they like clash with her. So it leads to this really cool sort of dynamic where you never know what imaginary friend is going to come out and if they're going to be helpful or not and I think she's a perfect fit for the uh, for the Suicide Squad although she's a little young I'm gonna to have to explain how a 13 year old is in Belle Reve and I do um, Candlemaker will also appear her most notorious uh, friend I'll call him he is uh, pretty evil in the comic books he's like a djinn or a genie like a wishing god um, we're gonna kind of not do that. I'm gonna do something really different with him, but keep his sort of menacing error and definitely keep his appearance. His comic appearance is awesome. I love it, and I want to keep it the same. She's gonna be sort of the main character of this. She's gonna fill sort of the rat catcher role, but I think uh, with a little more screen time and a little more going on. So uh, yeah, get excited. Up next, uh, we have one of my favorite members of the Suicide Squad, a character who is going to fill my polka dot man role and that this is going to be the character that people talk about and they're like have you heard that this guy is going to be in a movie who is this, this is so weird what what and that that guy is zebra man uh i've racked my brain trying to figure out what the fuck is up with zebra man uh i think it's some sort of like alien parasite almost like venom but then i'm like i'm not sure and i don't really care uh I just think he's really funny, and I think the thing to do with Zebra Man is to keep his powers. He has telekinetics and force fields, which has nothing to do with zebras. I think he gets his name because he is stripes, and I think that's the right angle, but I think you need to take it a little differently. So my uh, Zebra Man really likes zebras. He just thinks they're pretty neat. Uh, they're his favorite animal. So when it came time to become a supervillain after he got powers, specifically force field and mild telekinetics, uh, he was like, yeah, I'm gonna be Zebra Man. I like zebras. And we're gonna explore that. Uh, we're gonna use his character. I think he's really funny. His appearance is ridiculous, as you're no doubt seeing. I think he's one of the more ridiculous members on this team, which is saying something, given the members this team includes. Um, he's, uh, he's great. I love him. 
Uh, next, we've got a big one. This is a this is a character that is a Suicide Squad staple. She's probably the highest profile character I'm going to be using in this, besides Harley Quinn, of course. Uh, maybe Metallo, but they're both pretty popular. Uh, this is Killer Frost, a Suicide Squad staple who is associated with one thing and one thing only. And that's betraying the Suicide Squad. In basically every iteration of the squad I've seen Killer Frost in, specifically the movies, the animated ones, she betrays them. It's kind of hilarious. And I, I really like that. I like that she's just the guy who betrays the squad. I know it. You know it. People who are familiar know it. So it's fun. And so, yeah, I'm going to say Killer Frost will betray the squad. I'm not going to say when, where, or how. Uh, we're going to do it Hitchcock style, showing the bomb under the table instead of hiding it. Uh, that way there's suspense while you watch my shitty YouTube videos. When is she going to betray the squad? How's she going to do it? So yeah, Killer Frost. Fun girl, ice powers, betrays the squad. Alright, last but not least is one of my favorite DC characters of all time. Uh, as far as like Suicide Squad members of the past, this is a comic book member, a long time. He's died a couple times on them. Uh, Clock King. First introduced to this guy in the Batman animated series. I've kind of always loved him. I think he's really silly. I really like his power. And I use the word silly a lot because silly isn't a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's silly means that they have potential to be made great, to surprise you, to be a character that seems really dumb on the surface, but is actually really neat when you get down to it. And Clock King is one of those. His powers of extreme punctuality sound really stupid, and I mean they are, but he can actually be so cool and so useful, and his powers are surprisingly strong when you actually figure him out. And uh, you'll see that a lot. I'm going to use him a few times for some fun action set pieces. Uh, yeah, so Clock King is the last member of my squad. He is one of my personal favorite characters uh, who's ever been on the squad. I've used a lot of my personal favorites from this mythos and some new characters I've discovered researching this. Um, and I, uh, I tend to give them all the sort of love and care I think they deserve um, before I murder them all. Because again, I'm going to kill a lot of people in this. I think a Suicide Squad with a large cast is best served because you can kill uh, a lot of villains, you can kill a lot of characters, and people won't get too upset except for the fact that they've grown attached to these characters that they shouldn't feel attached to. I think that's a really cool, magical thing that only this franchise can really do. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, let's talk a little bit about who our villains will be fighting. Because obviously, our villains need to fight something. Uh, and they're not fighting a monster in this movie. In fact, they're fighting a cult. I have based the plot of this movie on the Waco, Texas incident. For those who don't know, look it up. There's some really great videos. I'll maybe link one in the comments or in the description. The Waco, Texas incident was uh, involved a cult fighting with the FBI and the ATF, and it was a bloodbath, and it was very controversial, and the exact sort of thing the Suicide Squad should be involved in. So I've used it for my script, and I'm using it as my main villain. So whose cult is this, and who might lead it? Well, I picked another silly villain who I think is popular among circles of, look at how weird this villain is. Uh, crazy Quilt. The man who has mind control powers and wears crazy quilts. And uh, I think he's really fun. I think this villain is great and I'm doing something different with him. He's a cult leader and he leads a few metahumans and a cult of normal people who have taken over the small Texas town of Comforton. Uh, Comforton is based on Comfort, Texas, small town here in Texas. Uh, specifically, they have uh, taken over this town that's sort of been abandoned. It's got small amounts of people in there, they've taken about 150 hostages, but what the town was once booming, it has a big mall left over from the 80s, we're gonna have a lot of action set pieces there, and there's just this sort of ghost town that still lived in small Texas town, and the Suicide Squad can sort of have free reign trying to take down this cult inside of this town without being detected. And uh, so we've got our members, we've got our location, so let's discuss some of the other followers of Crazy Quilt. We've got Mono, traditionally an alien, I'm making him a guy. He has the power to dissolve anything he touches, except for plastic and glass. He wears a suit, sort of reminiscent of Mysterio, I'm keeping his comic uh, appearance the same, basically. He's, um, uh, he's got a tragic backstory, we might touch, in it, touch on it a little bit in the movie, and he is a very serious threat. He's definitely the most dangerous of the metahumans that the squad's gonna have to face. And he's the one that's going to be the most interesting for them to fight. Because how do you fight something that can dissolve you or anything that touches him? Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. 
In addition, they'll be fighting another character called Druid, who is also a member of this cult and is a comic book character who has very Druid powers. I'm going to leave him sort of ambiguous for now, show a little picture of what he looks like in comic books. Uh, this is a character we'll explore as this series goes on. And last but not least of our main members is a character I've made up. I've based them sort of on Scarecrow, but she is different uh, too. Uh, her name is Phobia and she shows you your worst fear, your worst nightmare, and she makes you live it. Um, I like the Enchantress scene where she sort of shows the squad their ideal life and we get some insight into their personalities. I like that scene so much I want to take some inspiration from it. I think it's the good, the best scene in that squad movie, except it's poorly executed and put in the movie at the wrong time. Um, I think if you did the opposite, showed their worst fears or their worst memories, you could sort of use it to explore these characters really in depth while also having a good action scene. So we'll do that. Um, Phobia worked for the CIA. She used it to torture people and get information out of them. And uh, now she's mysteriously disappeared and become a member of this cult. Why is she there? What is her connection to Crazy Quilt? What are they trying to do by taking over this town? What does the cult believe in and what is their motivation? All of this and more will be explained and discovered throughout the movie that I'm writing right now. And uh, you're gonna, gonna have some fun learning about these characters, who's gonna live, who's gonna die. Uh, I welcome y'all to throw your predictions down in the chat. Put, put down who you think of these random characters I've thrown out here. Who do you think is going to die? Who's going to live? Who's going to be important? Who's not? Um, let me know if you have any characters you think I should add or think I should look into just because they're funny or whatever. Uh, give me thoughts, theories, whatever. Uh, let me if you like the video. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, part 1, which is going to describe uh, most of the first act, is going to be coming up pretty soon. Again, I am writing a script. I'll probably release the first act of it when I'm release that video. I might not have it done by then, but I'll definitely have the I've already storyboarded the whole thing. So yeah, let me know if you liked the video. Thanks for watching.